Good morning, this is Marshall Davis. Today I'm going to be beginning a series of episodes entitled Biblical Stories of Awakening. People tell me that they appreciate it when I tie Christian heritage, and particularly Christian scripture, to non-duality. So I'm going to be doing that for a while, focusing on some biblical examples of spiritual awakening. Christian non-duality means, among other things, that we use the Christian scriptures as a source book. And throughout the Bible, there are stories of spiritual awakening. And I have told some of those stories before. Actually, I've told quite a few of those stories, but I haven't done that for quite a while. So it's time to get back to the Bible and explore some of the characters in the Bible who woke up to non-dual reality. Now, to start off, I need to be completely honest here. Spiritual awakening, non-dual awakening, is not the main point of the Bible. It's not even a secondary point of the Bible. But it's there. Now, in some Buddhist and Hindu traditions, spiritual awakening is the main show. But in Christianity, and I think also Islam and Judaism, is it's a sideshow. It's present. It's present in Christian mysticism and in Jewish Kabbalah and in Islamic Sufism, but it's not the mainstream of these three religions. The mainstream of what is commonly called Western religion, even though they, they arose on the continent of Asia, and therefore technically Asian religions, but we call them Western religions, the, the mainstream of these is theism. And theism is dualistic. Theism posits an ontological separation between divine and human. And to identify human with divine is considered blasphemy, which is why Jesus was crucified for doing that. As the enemies of Jesus said in the Gospel of John, we aren't stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Christians consider anyone besides Jesus saying what Jesus said about himself is blasphemy. Muslims call it shirk. So Christian non-duality, you might say, is an oxymoron. At least it's a paradox. When I started doing these episodes, someone responded saying that there's no such thing as Christian non-duality. He said I could not be both a Christian and non-dual. And he was speaking from the perspective of Advaita Vedanta. But a lot of Christian conservatives would agree with him, saying I'm not really a Christian. The two terms Christian and non-duality do not go together logically or theologically. It's a good thing they don't care about theology, not a whole lot about being logical. So we're not going to find a lot of examples of non-dual awakening in the Christian Bible. Just like you're not going to find a lot in the Torah or the Quran, but they are sprinkled here and there throughout the Bible. The Bible begins, of course, with the book of Genesis. And the clearest example of spiritual awakening in the book of Genesis is the patriarch Jacob. I'm going to get to him next time, but today I'm going to talk about two examples in Genesis that come before Jacob. These are Adam and Enoch. Now Enoch, I mean Adam, is a special case because Adam was not an historical person. Adam is a mythical character. There is no man, there was no man named Adam married to a woman named Eve who lived in a land called Eden somewhere in what is now called the Middle East. The Hebrew word Adam, Adam, means man or human. It's obviously meant to be symbolic. The early chapters of the Bible are not meant to be taken literally, only literalists 
and particularly fundamentalists, take those stories of the of Genesis literally. It should be obvious that not to take it literally as soon as magical trees and talking snakes show up. Adam is an archetype. He represents humanity. Historically, you could say that he represents the first human, the first Homo sapiens, who evolved from earlier primates and at some point became self-aware. Humans came to see themselves as separate from and different from others. And that separate ego self is the cause of all of our problems, all of our spiritual problems, including the sense of separation from God, the sense of separation from the universe and the world and from others. That's what led to the first murder, according to the story of Cain and Abel. It was the fall from the natural non-dual consciousness to self-consciousness. Christian theologians call this the fall. The fall, as I explained in a previous episode, is a fall into duality represented by the tree of duality, the tree of the knowledge, good and evil, as the Hebrew literally says. That fall was a shift in consciousness. It was a fall from non-dual awareness into identity with the individual self. Infants today relive the pattern of our archetypal parents, Adam and Eve. Infants are born and not in non-dual awareness. One with everything, one with God and with the universe. This is our natural state. As we grow, we become aware of ourselves as a self. And are conditioned by human society to identify with the self as a separate entity. And so in this way we repeat the story of the fall of Adam and Eve. We are banished to live east of Eden and we are trying to get back to the garden. The Genesis story says the only way to get back to the garden is to go through the cherubim with a flaming sword that is standing guard at the entrance to the garden. Now, it should go without saying that there is no literal cherub somewhere standing guard in front of a gate to a garden somewhere in the Middle East, barring our access to a literal tree of life. That story is obviously symbolic. It is saying that the only way back to unitive awareness is to die. To physically die, or better yet, to die before you die, to die to self, and to be reborn as what we truly are. That true self, who and what we really are, is represented in the Bible by Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, says the Apostle Paul. The awakening story of Adam in the Old Testament is not finished, not completed, until the New Testament, when it is completed by Jesus. That occurs in Jesus' baptism. Christ is called the last Adam in the New Testament. Paul writes, the first Adam became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Christ completes the awakening process that was begun with Adam. Adam never wakes up in the Old Testament, but he does in Christ in the New Testament. Humans awaken. Christ represents the spiritual awakened human. What the first Adam lost, the second Adam regained. The first Adam represents humans emerging from pre human hominids with self-consciousness who fell into identifying with the self. The second Adam, Christ, is an example of spiritual awakening 
from identity as a self to non-dual awareness. That process fulfills our destiny as humans. In Adam, in Adam we die. In Christ we are made alive, Paul says. In Adam we become conscious of being a separate self and aware that the separate self, the separate body, mind, will one day die and cease to exist. In Christ we are aware that what we really are is not born and cannot die. So, the first Adam and the second Adam, Adam is the archetypal example of spiritual awakening, of eternal life, which is represented by the tree of life. The other example of spiritual awakening in the early chapters of Genesis is a man named Enoch. Now I'm not going to say a whole lot about him because the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about him. His whole life is summed up in four verses and only one of those verses is important. This verse. It says, Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Now that is traditionally interpreted to mean that Enoch did not physically die, but that he was physically translated to heaven like Elijah later ascended to heaven without seeing death. That is how the New Testament letter to the Hebrews interprets it. I interpret that statement in Genesis as the death of the self and awakening to unitive awareness. It says Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. In other words, Enoch saw that he was not. He experienced literal selflessness, that the self was not real, that there is no self. That is spiritual awakening. We see that we are not and that God alone is. And when we live that, we walk with God and we are one with God. And God takes us into God's own self and our separate self melts away. That is what happened to Enoch. Enoch woke up. At that moment of spiritual awakening and the dissolution of the self, Enoch also let go of the body as well. The Hindus call this Mahasamadhi, the conscious letting go of the body, becoming one with the one that we call God, transitioning to the kingdom of God, you might call it. It is said that at his spiritual awakening, the Buddha had the choice to leave the body and remain in Nirvana or to stay on earth and to teach. And he chose to stay and teach. Enoch made the other choice. He chose Nirvana. And he was the first awakened human in the Bible. And that is it for today. Grace and peace to you.